much for your kind introduction. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's a big pleasure for me to be here, give this talk at uh, this amazing conference. But first of all, have a look here to this so-called emotion butterfly. So with only 27 grams total weight and a flapping frequency of one to two hertz a second, it almost flies like a real one. And can you imagine what we can learn from these kind of robots, from these kind of bio biological role models regarding lightweight design principles, regarding swarm behavior, for example? What can we learn and how can we use it in a technical world that actually looks like this. I need to click up. So. Yeah. so what you see on this slide, these actually are the products we usually sell. We are a family-owned company in Germany with about 19,000 employees. And most of them, almost all, develop and sell these kind of linear access and handling devices and all the stuff that is needed to produce the products of our daily lives, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But within Festo, we have a small group, 10 uh, persons uh, right now. And over the last 12 years, we have developed more than 45 projects developed or inspired by nature, together with scientists, with students, and with external partners. And we want to learn from nature. We want to fascinate, especially the youth for technology. We want to inspire with cutting edge technology. And finally, we also want to pre-develop products. So you see this so-called Festo DNA in the middle. There are the concepts that are closely related to our core business in the field of industrial automation. I want to show you a short video with some highlights of the last 12 years. So we have developed a bunch of underwater robots like penguins. Aqua jellies. We have the shift to the flight of birds with Smart Bird, our most popular robot in 2010. We have increased complexity with the Bionic Opter, a kind of artificial dragonfly, the most advanced acrobat of air. And we fly fully autonomously if we have external cameras with our butterflies. We've learned from kangaroos how to deal with energy. We studied collaborative behavior of the ants. We call it bionic ants, tiny robots. But beside these animals, we also developed uh, quite a lot of handlings, like this wave handling. Uh, with this handling, we are able to sort and transport items at the same time using a wave mechanism. The exoskeleton hand actually allows us to telemanipulate over a big distance, even with force feedback. And the octopus gripper, in combination with a kind of artificial elephant trunk, is a totally new way of how to handle and how to deal in a human-machine interaction safely and secure. Same with the Bionic Cobot, our latest uh, project we have presented at the last Hanover Fair, is specifically designed to work in interaction with humans. So easy to teach and very safe and secure to, to, due to pneumatical drives. So no electrical motors, no gears, only pure pneumatic. So, but for today, I don't want to go too much into detail with all of these projects. You can find them on YouTube and on our webpage, very well documented with animations and films and explanation. Today, I would like to talk about the methodology we're working on these kind of concepts within our team. Because I'm very often asked, how do you manage to come up each year with three to four projects with such a small team, uh, such a few people? So first of all, very simple, everybody knows, and uh, probably I actually don't need to say it here because this is a very interdisciplinary audience, but in reality, neither in universities nor in companies, uh, we have a lot of interdisciplinary interactions nowadays. We still have the software departments, the design departments, and they work together somehow, but in our department, they are sitting close next to each other. Computer scientists, designers, biologists, control engineers, all they work closely together in the office or better in the lab. And this is not only a lot of fun, you can learn so much from each other, and it's highly motivating, and you also get a much better understanding over time while working together. 
Second, find an inspiring biological role model. And the chameleon, for example, is such a fascinating role model. It has so many features at the first sight. It can change the color, it can roll its eyes, and it has this catapult effect uh, in his tongue. But have you ever had a closer look to the tip of the tongue? Like two students from the University in Norway did. And they figured out that the tongue, the tip of the tongue itself, wraps around the insect in order to grip it fast and secure. And together with these students, we have developed this so-called flex-shaped gripper. And this gripper is able to grip all kinds of geometries. It can grip more than one item at the same time. It also can do the grip out of a box very easily, without a lot of control. So usually you need camera systems to do this, but in this case we just go for it and we catch almost every time anything. And it's also safe and secure for humans because it's a soft material, a waterfill silicon cap, so no danger of clamping your fingers. So and if we start this kind of projects, we do it very often, very quickly and easily. So the students came up with this uh, toy for kids in combination with the sewer pipe and they showed the function actually after only uh, some days uh, within a bionic workshop we did together. So we very often start like this. We use the materials we have in our lab. We never ask somebody if we're allowed to do this. Uh, we often do it with uh, students without big budget. And uh, we are so fast just to figuring out if we would be able to build a real kangaroo or a fish or a bird or something like this. So these kind of hands-on prototypes are so helpful for us to get really fast started and to get uh, fast success. This, for example, was uh, the beginning of the dragonfly. You also figure out very fast uh, if you fail. Next important thing, at the very beginning, we mostly do not know exactly where we end. So we try to incubate ideas and put several irons into the fire. In the case of the ants, we had several students working on different tasks. So one student tried different kind of new actuator principles like SMA wires or piezo elements and have developed, has developed tiny legs for the ant. Another student worked on electronics and figured out how to combine this MID technology, these golden uh, circuits, directly on a 3D printed uh, body. Scientists at the University in Ulm, they worked on distributed control and decentralized intelligence. And this took us some months, but then we were able to bring the team together to build this advanced robot, the Bionic Ant. Often it helps to pursue several goals simultaneously. For sure, we want to make products, or pre-develop products at least. But also, we want to fascinate useful technology. We want to get in contact with scientists and talents all over the world in order to enhance our creativity and enhance the way we can do the projects together. So we want to learn from nature. And imagine if you asked to develop an innovative uh, product a product that should target market potential, that should be produced sustainably and recyclably, should be inexpensive, robust, high of quality, useful, and so on. So many demands. But who should ever be able to design something like this just from scratch? So we often decide we go for a concept first. And this concept should be innovative. It should be fascinating. It should be educational and inspiring. And then it can grow if it's successful. And very often we don't sell the kangaroo in the end, but we sell algorithms or the way or the principles we deal with energy. We recover energy, we use it in this case for the next jump, but we also can use it for the next movement in terms of industry automation. So during the project phase, it's always important to constantly zoom in and zoom out and think in iterations and variants. And therefore we have generalists within our group, generalists that try to take the eye on the big picture and specialists that dive deep into technical problems, programming code, doing all the circuit birds and so on. But the team together has to have the playground and the freedom to work on these kind of crazy things. We need to be open 
and have the self-confidence and the courage to fail if we show these really early prototypes to the decision makers and ask for money, ask for the order to bring it to the next fair. Together we have to take the risk sportingly, have to be patient and have, a lot, have to have a lot of frustration tolerance. And finally, the belief in the project. And I think this video shows quite well how it looks in reality nowadays. Right now, my colleagues preparing at home for the next fair in April. So now the budget is fixed. We have the clear order to have one year time uh, with a team, three to eight persons uh, in total, to bring this concept uh, yeah, to the stage. We try to break down the problem and solve it uh, on a smaller scale. We try to reduce complexity. Sometimes we're lucky, sometimes we fail. It's always a question of how robust is the hardware in cause of failure and how much can you do with control algorithms. And in the end, if it works, so everybody is happy and we have a big success at the fairs. Another very simple idea actually is to define an 80% solution as a preliminary goal. So as everybody knows, it takes 20% to achieve the 80% and it takes 80% effort to achieve the last 20%. But we as engineers, we very often try to, to achieve the 150% solution at the very beginning and uh, very often we try, we forget to ask the customers if we are on the right track. But thanks to rapid prototyping technologies, we can come up very fast with prototypes, functional prototypes that can be tested in real life, that can be shown and fairs and discussed with our customers. And then if we get the requirements back and the needs from industry, then we finalize the concept and make a product out of it. And from the left side, the rapid prototype uh, cripper to the final product, it took us three to five years uh, to get all the food approval, the certificates and the robustness that is needed in the field of industrial automation. Often it helps to generate strong images and to provide insights. So this makes it easy to get in contact with journalists, but also with scientists and our customers. And imagine when you have been at the last Hanover Fair in April, there have been more than 1,000 robots exhibited. But we achieved a lot of media attention with this transparent version. And it was very important for us to make a transparent version because this cobot is so much different from all the other robots because it, because it is driven with compressed air and not with electrical motors like all the other robots are. So we really want to show and to provide the insight that there is no motor, no electronics insight. But providing insights, not just by making things transparent, but also by, by showing how it works and why we did it and how we did it together in teams, this helps us to start a discussion that is very important for us if we want to continue these concepts and making products out of it. Finally, if we bring the projects to the fair, we always try to make the achievements of all the members of the group visible. So all the students and uh, the staff of my team, uh, also the external partners are with us at the fair and they get the direct feedback. And often the booth looks like this, so very crowded. Um, a lot of fascinated people and this uh, is a big success for us and motivates us very much to start immediately after the fair, go for the next project. So last but not least, I want to point out that it's so important to concentrate on the essence of all things. So it's not only about the features the product has or doesn't have. Even if we're so fascinated by new technologies, uh, seeing all the advantages, maybe the risks as well, it's important to always have a, in mind the potential what can grow out of an idea and to discuss these ideas and find others in the world to collaborate with. And I hope that our work is in a way inspiring you as well to think big, to follow your dreams, to build whatever you want and maybe this methodology helps a bit to get started quickly and easily. Thanks a lot.